you know, if you wear a Fitbit and you have your sleep tracker and you can see how many times you woke up in the morning and what do you do at that point? This is a wearable that actually can solve problems. It doesn't just give you the data about the problem you have, it can do something about it. Human OS. Learn. Master. Achieve. Can a device help you get better sleep? That's the subject of our show today. You might recall a few episodes back I did with Professor Jamie Zeitzer at Stanford. We discussed light circadian rhythms and a new wearable device that can cut the days required to adjust to a new time zone. In other words, cutting jet lag in possibly less than half. In other words, if you travel from San Francisco to London, it usually takes, let's say, six days to fully adjust. This technology can help you fully adjust in three days or maybe even less. That is huge news for regular travelers, but this technology can also be used for teenagers who naturally want to go to bed later, but still need to wake up early for school. And even for people who do regular shift work, even though their bodies are not being transported across time zones, for all intents and purposes, flip-flopping between night and day shifts is the same as time zone travel, but without the plane. So pretty exciting stuff here. Today, we're going to talk about another technology that can help you sleep. One of the biggest complaints I hear regularly is people having a hard time shutting down at night. While the former technology I was referring to uses specifically timed light pulses to shift your circadian rhythms super fast, this is a neurostimulation device you wear like a headband one or two hours before sleep to help the mind relax. I've not tried either of these devices as neither are commercially available, but they should be available this year. In the last show with Professor Zeitzer, we discussed how this new breed of wearable technology not only measures and reports on sleep, which, don't get me wrong, can be very valuable for dialing in good sleep behaviors, but this next gen of devices may actually influence the quality and timing of sleep itself. It's an exciting world we live in, so without further ado, I bring you Kelly Roman, the co-founder of the company Fisher Wallace, who will be bringing a neurostimulation product called Cortex to the market mid-year to help our minds relax before bed. Kelly, welcome to HumanOS Radio. Tell us about your company, Fisher Wallace, and your neurostimulation product. Fisher Wallace manufactures one device and one technology, and we've just launched a second one, Cortex, which I know you want to talk about. But since 2009, we've marketed a device called the Fisher Wallace Stimulator, and that is basically a handheld neurostimulation device that then has a couple of electrodes that come up from the handheld device and slip under a headband above each temple. And that device is defined as a medical device. It has FDA clearance to treat depression, anxiety, and insomnia. It runs on two AA batteries. Patient wears it for 20 minutes. And in that 20 minutes, they receive a low-dose electrical stimulation between 1 and 4 milliamps which is very comfortable. At level three and four, you can feel some tingling, mm -hmm. but it's not an uncomfortable experience. The device employs multiple frequencies, two of which are patented and about six of which are not. They're trade secrets. And the combination of those frequencies allow the electrical current to pass through the bone matter. And at the temples, it's one of the thinnest parts of the skull. That's one reason why we place the electrodes there. Mm -hmm. And also the frequencies can modulate the physiological effects. So you don't quite feel the stimulation on the surface of your skin as much because of their frequencies. And also the most important aspect of the frequencies is their ability to stimulate neurochemical production, dampen the default mode network, which right now are what we understand is the mechanisms of action for this device. So the stimulation has been shown to reach you know, all the way to the center brain, thalamus, basal ganglia, and we have uh, studies that show durable increases in serotonin, uh, melatonin, uh, GABA, and reductions in cortisol. We've also over the years, I've conducted a number of studies on effectiveness and safety. Of note, uh, we have one clinical trial we did at Mount Sinai that was published in 2015 on bipolar 2 depression, the most difficult form of depression to treat. It's very resistant to drug therapy. Uh, one reason for that is antidepressant medication, SSRIs, often amplify the mania and hypomania sides of bipolar disorder. And so even if they're successful in reducing the depression, which they're only successful about a third of the time doing, they can often trigger the, the mania and hypomania and cause other side effects. And so it's well known in the bipolar clinical and research circles that it's just a very difficult form of depression to treat. So one of the leading bipolar researchers, Igor Gallinker, conducted the study about Sinai. He was double-blind, placebo-controlled, 
And all of the subjects that received active treatment had a large effect size on the Beck Depression Index, which is basically a gold standard depression measurement tool. It's self-reported for the patient. All of the patients who got the active treatment had a big effect size there. There were no incidents of side effects at all, no hypomania, no mania. We have to do a larger study to make that definitive, but that was a landmark study for neurostimulation, and there's 6 million people that have bipolar in the United States. Mm. We also did a 392-subject pilot study at Phoenix House in 2009. They had patients of all different kinds of drug abuse, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, they gave two-thirds of them their regular treatment protocol, and about a third of them got the device. And the group that got the device remained in rehab after 90 days at a rate 50% higher than those that did not get the device, who just had the regular treatment. Mm. And so when you're seeing that kind of enormous increase in retention, that's very valuable for a lot of reasons. First of all, there's a correlation between retention rate, how long you stay in rehab, and whether or not you have recidivism, whether you're going to leave and then go back to abuse. So there's a high correlation there between staying in, in rehab and, and success long term. We are actually have another study that's going to be double-blind placebo-controlled on retention at a major drug rehab center. We can't announce it yet because it's going through their board for approval, but we expect that to be approved this year and have results by the end of the year. There is a 100-subject sleep study going on at University of Texas that's fully funded by the university using our device to study insomnia. So we have some good research in the pipeline. We have some very good research that's already in our portfolio. And we've been able to leverage that with modern direct-to-consumer digital marketing techniques to build a business. So drive people to our website, educate them on the technology. You need a prescription in the U.S. It's actually not as rigorous as for a drug. It doesn't have to be from an MD. It can come from any licensed healthcare practitioner, so an acupuncturist, a psychologist, a licensed social worker. Our next step is building some digital health services around our product and app. You have a new device that's coming online called Cortex. Tell us about that. Cortex is a neurostimulator that uses the same technology as our first generation device. So same technology as the Fisher-Wallace stimulator. But from an industrial design perspective, we designed it so that it can attach to a VR headset. And the, the reason why we did that is because, A, we were seeing over the years, there's been a lot of very interesting work in VR therapy with patient populations that we're already treating. So PTSD, substance abuse patients. There has been a lot of work and a lot of published research on VR therapy, uh, mostly in exposure therapy. You know, we saw an opportunity to combine our clinical success as an intervention with the success of content. And so we designed a device that could fit comfortably onto a VR headset. Mm -hmm. We did lower the maximum stimulation from 4 milliamps to 2 milliamps. Okay. And the reason we did that is because once you go over 2 milliamps, you really start to get some optic nerve stimulation, which is safe but you don't really want to have that while you're experiencing VR. Okay. But we're not sacrificing the clinical benefit that's been shown in the research, for instance. So, And we are planning to ultimately come out with a prescription version of Cortex. We've started with the OTC version. So Got it. this Cortex is intended to help manage stress and sleep. It's not a medical device. It's a general wellness device, but it benefits from the fact that it clones the technology of our first device. And so you can see, for instance, that all the studies we did with the first device were at two milliamps or, or less. Uh -huh. And so the biomarker evidence, other forms of evidence are relevant. We're able to market the biomarker evidence when we're talking about Cortex because that's not a medical claim. We can't go out and say, you know, Cortex treats you know, bipolar depression. We're not allowed to do that. We're not going to do that. We don't need to do that. We have a first generation device that is making medical claims and is regulated by FDA. So Cortex is really designed for more of your everyday consumer who wants to improve stress and sleep. From a content perspective, I think there's two avenues that are very interesting. One is kind of the pure consumer avenue in pairing, relaxing, engaging, meditative type content to amplify the experience of using Cortex. And so we partnered with us two games. They're well known for Monument Valley, and they created this great uh, VR game called Land's End, which when I first experienced it, I felt relaxed within 60 seconds. Then I started sliding the electrodes under the VR head strap just from our first generation device, because we have these electrodes that already go under a headband. Right. And I experienced it in combination. 
it was a very peaceful experience. I reached out to us two games. They were very responsive, very receptive. The more medical avenue of pairing it with VR therapy, like exposure therapy for PTSD, that's going to be something that needs to be investigated in a research setting. And we're talking to some of the top researchers like Skip Rizzo at USC, who's done a ton of VR therapy research. So you know, we want to get these Cortex devices into their hands and give them a tool that they can use in their research. But right now, we have a great product for stress and sleep. And we hit our Indiegogo goal in six days. So we're definitely gotten some good press. And we're going to release it certainly by July, maybe a little earlier. I think we're going to continually get more and more interest in this product because it's something that actually works, actually is an intervention. If you wear a Fitbit and you have your sleep tracker and you can see how many times you woke up in the morning and what do you do at that point? This is a wearable that actually can solve problems. It doesn't just give you the data about the problem you have. It can do something about it. As a sleep scientist, a common question I get is how to turn off before bed. For a lot of people that just don't have a clinical sleep issue, this is their issue. Their minds are still racing about some problem they're working on that day or worry about something that they need to do tomorrow. And having a device that can enhance relaxation techniques, which we know to be effective, I think that could be a big win. And I can imagine everyone having something like this in their bed table drawer that they use when they need it. Sure, some people would need something like this more regularly, but a lot of us experience something like I just described on a semi-regular basis, perhaps weekly to monthly. This sounds like it could really help. The alternating current has been shown to dampen that default mode network, and that network is very active when you're stressing and thinking about work, and that is what is dampened naturally when you bring your attention to something external, and that's where rapid eye movement therapy has had some benefit, and so our device is working physiologically on the brain in that way. One of the things I really like about Land's End is that if you just look at the color palette, it's using those orange tones that have been shown to help you wind down. You don't want to have a bright cell phone in your face right before you go to bed, but an hour or two before bed, you can use Cortex, Experience Land's End, or some of the other content that we'll curate, and we'll be very careful to make sure that that content from a visual perspective is something that will help you relax. That is important. Getting light right into the eye is a signal to stay awake. The fact that you guys are mindful of that, are using tones that are less stimulating, pulling out as much of that blue light that you can. But I imagine in a rust-colored desert setting that would lend itself to favorable color palette for that environment. And yeah, so the idea is you'd use this perhaps an hour before you intend to go to sleep, and that relaxes the mind, and it can help you quiet down some of the areas that are overactive, and you get better sleep. You guys are releasing this in July, you said? We're releasing this in July, but from a manufacturing point of view, we're not reinventing the wheel here. So we feel pretty confident in that timeline. If you have better quality of sleep, you can often have a little bit less of it and feel even more refreshed. From the 20,000 patients that we've treated with the Fisher Wall Stimulator, that's a common feedback that we get. We distribute all of our devices directly to the consumer, and so as a result, we're in touch with these consumers. We have a tremendous amount of insight uh, into what the experience is, and, and I know, for instance, the soldier who is talking about his experience on our Indiegogo video, uh, he's a four tours of duty, Iraq and Afghanistan, terrible sleep issues until he started using our technology. He said that his sleep at six hours, he feels like he slept for nine in terms of his energy level. Yeah. And I also think who doesn't have stress, even if you feel like your sleep is completely perfect, this can be used in the morning. It can be used at any point in the day where you just really need to take it down a couple notches. You know, those kinds of things are really important for a healthy lifestyle as well. It can be used before sleep. It can be used in the middle of the day as more of a relaxation facilitator, I'm really excited to see the device come onto the market. 50 to 70 million people that have diagnosed sleep problems in the United States, but there's a lot more people that still battle with imperfect sleep every night. So this might help a good amount of them. So thank you for the work you do and coming on to explain it. Well, thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for listening and come visit us soon at humanos.me.